Climate change, we have a limited amount of time to resolve it. And it concerns everyone, literally everyone. How could we stay under two degrees C? Everybody has to do everything possible. Doing things sustainably is even more modern than modern. But it's a win-win situation. Why isn't it happening? We have one more shot at this in Paris. The fact is that if you don't think you can play a role, you won't. The window is closing, but our window is still open. They can see my hand, but they can't see me. <laughs> a lot of it is us filming, figuring it out, too. The process of filming. Well, because the idea is that I don't know much. Kai knows more than I do. So it's kind and of... you know more than I do. <laughs> so us figuring it out is leading them on the journey of them figuring it out as well. Yeah, so we're here. We're there. We're there. Mm -hmm. And that's... December down there? And that's Paris. Wowzer. <laughs> we have a brief window of time where we have to take some serious action. Um, and I think for those people that know that, it's you kind of feel responsible. I do think there is like an actual deadline to like saving the world. Um, it's like, okay, I, knowing what I know, I have to do something right now, which is why I'm involved with yeah. Citizens Climate Lobby and wanting yeah. to help you with this project. So COP21. Which stands for? Conference of the Parties, uh, the twenty-first Conference of the Parties. The Conference of the Parties is the decision-making body for how they're going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and otherwise deal with climate change. My name is Michael Gerard. I'm a professor at Columbia Law School, where I teach environmental law and energy law, and I direct the Sabin Center for Climate Change Law. So, so can I can I just make a little bit of you know three minutes of background that I think will be necessary? You yes, can cut up. So, in 1992. The countries of the world got together in Rio and adopted the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. They established a conference of the parties, a conference of all the countries that had signed on, and they meet every year. That's the COP, the Conference of the Parties, to make decisions about how to go forward with meeting the objectives from the Framework Convention. The Rio conference was in 1992. The the principal agreement on how to achieve its objectives was reached in Kyoto in 1997. That's the Kyoto Protocol. It was operational for the most part between 2008 and 2012, but most of it expired. So we've known for a long time that it's necessary to come up with a new agreement to succeed Kyoto. There was an attempt to do that at the COP in Copenhagen in 2009. That failed. The next big attempt is coming up this December in Paris with COP21. My biggest question was just like, why don't I know that it's, that it's happening? Like, this COP is happening. Like, why don't I know? That, that was my question. It's kind of why I started all this, because I was like, I didn't know that, and I don't think any of my friends know I that. I was quite switched on. Like, I know I don't know a lot, but I'm aware, at least. But I've never heard of it before. Yeah. This film turned into a web series because I wanted to build momentum as we're going towards Paris. And the idea is to focus on what the solutions are, like what are people saying that we can actually do. All I ever hear is, well these are the concepts, and then that's it. So hopefully that's what in Paris they're trying to get to is, well now what's the step of implementing those? So I guess I'm looking for trying to talk to people who have these ideas and, and trying to figure out what is like pragmatically possible in time and how do we as kind of a younger generation who are going to inherit a lot of this feel empowered i feel like i'm a conscious citizen a conscientious citizen of the world but sometimes i even feel at a loss of what i can really do to make a huge difference i try to do sm small things at home like recycle I, I know that like like we say you, you do recycling at home but I kind of feel helpless when it comes to climate change. I'm just like, I really don't know what else I can possibly do. Changing light bulbs to complex fluorescent bulbs for me, incandescent, driving more fuel efficient cars, recycling. Uh, recycling, all that helps, but it's far from sufficient. So let's introduce yourself first. So my name is Pushkar Karatya. I'm a climate scientist uh, affiliated with the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies and the Columbia University Earth Institute. The ultimate resolution to the climate crisis, in my opinion, is going to have to come within an international policy framework. The real question we're looking at is how um, the global community is going to come together and solve this problem. Right. Either A, they feel disempowered, or B, they feel that someone's already taken care of it and they 
can be excused of like accountability or responsibility. Or they see that like nothing can be done. Or see that nothing can be done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a pretty dire one. Let's let's let's. I think there's people who think that, and I, I think if they knew more, they wouldn't feel that way. So, I wrote down for episode one. We can cover the briefly the science, mm-hmm. um, the history of the cop process, and then like the stakes and urgency, what this is, and why is it such a critical moment in the universe of solutions for climate change. And so do you feel that COP21 is different from Copenhagen and different from Kyoto? Well, it's been a per- it's been an evolution um, and so the circumstances today are different. But in in Kyoto there was a sense that a binding agreement really was the way to go and would be effective, but the US chose not to be bound by it. In Copenhagen there was still the sense that we should have a um, uh, a binding agreement, and then that turned into something weaker than that. I think now there is general understanding that a legally binding agreement that has meaningful sanctions is not achievable. But if we have Europe and China and the U.S. all signed on, then that is major progress. And each country is being asked to come up with its own nationally determined emission reduction pledges that, uh, that they formulate themselves. They're also coming up with a, a framework of standardizing contributions so they can actually total up uh, how much carbon is emitted, how much carbon is reduced, um, and to see if it can stay within like a two degrees warming limit. Is that it though? It's just reduce emissions or is it to, I mean, is that essentially the goal? Every ton of CO2 that we emit, around 20% of that stays in the atmosphere and therefore affects global climate for millennia. The problem is that people just don't understand the urgency. That point cannot be stressed enough. It's extremely urgent. It it should be really regarded as a planetary emergency. Why? Death. (laughs) We're currently, no, we've already seen the effects of climate change. Well, and Kaya, as you were saying, it's not just climate change, it's like, this is climate disaster. Well, I think, that, yeah, one of the guys in the Guardian podcast was saying that climate change is such like a mm-hmm. change. I mean, change is a neutral. Yeah, but like, it's a neutral sure, term. That is, but that is also true. the fact that the climate has changed. It's not right. something the climate will change. It's right. that it has changed and is changing. So the temperature rise that we've witnessed so far is just under one degree. It's about 0.8 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial. And so what I mean by pre-industrial is the era before widespread burning of fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas. Over the last few decades, the temperature rise that we've seen is greater than any time in the last thousand years. So yeah, even with a fairly modest temperature increase of, remember, it's only been about 0.8 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial so far, we've already seen a significant worsening of various categories of extreme events, droughts, floods, slash heavy precip events, wildfires, heat waves, storms, and so on. Those have already led to, in turn, uh, disruptive impacts on both human society and natural ecosystems. So basically, human civilization developed uh, uh, within a relatively constant and benign uh, temperature range. That's why human society was able to flourish. That's why civilization developed. Now, what we're doing is massively disruptive. To that nice climate that we have that really enabled us to become what we are. Exactly. Is it 450 is seen as the threshold? 450 parts per million? 350? Is it 350? Because we're past 350. We're way past 350, but... Was that seen? <laughs> was that the threshold? Yeah. <laughs> you said something about uh, 450 ppm. Can you just talk a little bit about what that, what that is? Sure, yes. Terms? So ppm is parts per million. So that just means 450 molecules of carbon dioxide per million molecules of dry air. And, and where are we now? So right now, in terms of CO2, we're just about at 400 parts per million in the atmosphere. That is unprecedented. Over the past 800,000 years, the atmospheric CO2 concentration has varied at most between about 180 ppm to about 280 to 300 ppm. So uh, we're at 400 ppm. So that is 33% above the maximum in the last 800,000 years. The concentration of methane has also increased by even more than CO2 by over a factor of two. So these, these increases are very significant. So if our economy, the world economy continues to grow, 
at the same rate as we've been growing, CO2 will go up by two parts per million each year, so we would reach 450 in 25 years, which is associated with the two degree mm. warming limit. It is just context, that it, and it's hard because you don't want to spoon feed people. Switched on people do have an awareness of basic climate change related things. I think for me, I'd heard of the two degrees limit, but I hadn't quite I hadn't quite thought through no. what that actually means. No. Two degrees is a kind of an arbitrary thing in a way, and we don't know exactly what it means. I'm Mark Kane. I'm a climate scientist. I'm a professor at Columbia, um, and I've been there for 30 years now. But it's a bit like nutritional guidelines. Okay, Nutritional guidelines are issued to try to make you eat healthier. The people putting it together know that you know, it's not exactly right. It's not like, oh, you eat exactly this way, you'll be fine. You have one cannoli too many and you're dead. So it doesn't work that way and this doesn't work that way either. Okay, but we need something to shoot at. What would a two degrees target mean in terms of our climate and the consequences then? Even with one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial, uh, there will be significantly increased risk of worsened extreme events and increased threats to already unique and threatened ecosystems. Once we get to two degrees Celsius and beyond, those risks are further enhanced. On a broader note, all this talk about temperature targets and carbon budgets can uh, be slightly distracting from the, the main goal. And the main goal really is to reverse course as soon as possible. By that I mean not just stabilize greenhouse gas emissions, but actually decrease greenhouse gas emissions. There's no reason that we can't start doing that within the next decade or so. We know that that's almost uh, just about the same amount of time we have to actually do something about it. Yeah, basically why I started this was I found out like, oh, we have the capabilities, so why are we right. doing it? Right, right, <laughs> and we exactly. go back and forth being like, oh no, we're pessimistic right now, and then we feel optimistic, and we're back yeah, and yeah, forth. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, uh, just, to, just to reiterate, I think from a technological and scientific perspective, there is plenty of room for optimism. I think this, I mean, this is the overall okay. path we're on, right? S establishing the what and the why, and basically the film is the how. Okay. The how is kind of between now and Paris. Because it's the, it's the journey which gives you the structure, like it, it, yeah. the journey to Paris gives you a really good structure. So this is like, okay, so however many, 200 days away? Uh, less now. Less now. How it's so... Uh, December 11th is the deadline for, <laughs> according to the COP21 website, it's, yeah. Yeah. the deadline for reaching a new international climate agreement that includes all major emitters. So they, this is like a really... You know what else December 11th is? No. My birthday. Oh, that's crazy. Maybe you'll get some really good news. <laughs> birthday really present, birthday present. We only have so much time, yeah, you know? We, it's not like... time to like sit down and make it's it not, perfect. No, it's not like this is a finished product. It has to look really good. It has to have all this music and like it's it's going to be... It's going to be a little like... I mean, and you're capturing what's actually happening, which is like a once in a lifetime thing, so... Yeah, I'm going to go to Vaughn to see how, how the agreement changes in the negotiation process there. You're going to go where? To oh, Bonn, okay. So it might be that at the end of that I might come back. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. If there are questions I have. Oh, yeah, I yeah. feel like right now I'm trying to wrap my mind around it all and be like, and try to figure that out. Like, what do I do? And I feel like at this point, the one thing I know is I can't, I can't just sit here and wait for something to happen or not happen. <laughs> but but I feel like it, the, the, our our time of action is really short and this is we're in it like we have to do something now if we're going to do anything at all. Well, I'll be standing by you with a camera. Thank you. We'll go down fighting Hopefully together. We'll go down fighting together. That's the end point, and that's where all the energy is going. Mm -hmm. What parties? All, uh, all the parties. Like, you just, is that... It's not all the member states, is it, or is it? Mm -hmm. about it, like, what is COP, and why is it so important, and why are so many people, like, looking to it as a solution, almost?